Please take your seats. School is now in session. Welcome to Homeschool Podcast. Homeschool. The Homeschool Podcast. Why? Because it was homeschool. It's time to document the journey. back to homeschool podcast uh better late than never you guys thank you for your patience another late release of, of this episode um a, a lot of you probably heard it's been one hell of a week for me um it's been one hell of a week for you know if you if you know comics in la you know what i'm talking about so um <clears throat> it's, it's just it's just been it's been a really hard like past couple of weeks so uh that's what kind of why it's delayed. I've been occupied. I've had a lot going on, and <clears throat> I'm supposed to be in um, Maui, Hawaii. Uh, if you've been listening to the show, it's one of the dates that I was that I was posting. And um, uh, uh, what is it? September 20th. I'm supposed to be performing in Maui, Hawaii. So a lot of you probably heard what uh what happened uh like over over uh, a week ago i don't know when it was september 4th september 5th i don't know so um and i think a lot of people heard about it because of what happened with uh with kate and uh so that's probably why a lot of people knew about it you know she's popular in the comedy community made headlines also um <clears throat> from what I heard, an update from that she's out of the hospital recovering, and I'm sure you guys know of uh, you know three other people that passed away there. Um, you know, you may have also heard about it in the headlines because of Fuquan Johnson, who was uh, you know a dear friend of mine and and uh, close to the circles that I, not only I hang out with but that I came up in. And stand-up comedy, and uh, you know he's uh, <clears throat> Fu was a uh, really fun guy, sweet, always making people laugh. Knew how to make me laugh. He knew how to, uh, you know, <laughs> he had this way of making you, you know, not be upset anymore when you were upset by making fun of you for being upset. It just kind of be like, you know, like with that voice, you know. Like, yo, Aug, you mad? And like, oh, Aug's mad, you know? And just, you know, you, you can tell when you were mad at something or... Anyway, just a good di- guy, really funny dude. Um, had been close friends with the Wayans, I know, for years since he was young. And uh, you basically a family member there, family member to us, family member to the HaHa. And, um, and uh, you know, but he, a lot of... Uh, Really funny sketches he did, some with the Waynes and stuff like that. So he made headlines too. Uh, and then the other, the girl who passed away there, I never met her. And as far as I know, I don't think she was a comic. I think she was just friends hanging out. And uh, the other one, uh, you've been hearing about Enrico Colangeli, or as I call him, or we all call him, known as Rico. Um, was one of my best friends in the entire world. Someone that I would consider a brother. Someone who's lived with me. I've lit stay on my couch. He's let me live with him. Um, I've been, you know, when he moved back to Boston, I would constantly see him at least once a year. I've stayed in his mother's home. I've had dinner and broke bread with his entire family, father, mother. I mean, you get the point. Just like one of my closest Excuse me. Uh, one of my closest friends. And, um, you know, he's gone. So it's just been a really rough. It's been a really rough, rough week. But nonetheless, um, we got you one homeschooled podcast episode this week. Uh, <clears throat> so it's just it's just been crazy. Um it was bad enough, you know, the emotions that I went through first started with like, you know, I didn't even realize it was real. And, uh, but the first emotions that I had was more anger, you know, anger, what he was doing, anger, why it happened to him, 
the wrong thing happened to him. And, uh, you know, I had to get a break from anger and I would have a day of mourning. You know, I could start looking at some pictures and posting stuff up online and finally able to mourn a little bit or celebrate my friend's life. And then I'd go back to anger and then I would go finally be, all of a sudden just start, you know, crying my eyes out. And it's been it's been a rough couple of days and, you know, dealing with that. And then all of a sudden uh, I found out that the funeral is going to be back in Boston and it's on um it's on September 18th, this Saturday. Um, so a lot of you guys have been hearing me plug on this show. If you know, if you're following my tour at all, I'm supposed to be in Maui, Hawaii. I have a show on the 20th of this month, but I was actually going to go to Maui on the 18th through the 23rd because I had uh, been planning uh, sort of a second honeymoon and a uh, five-year anniversary for me and my wife. She's never been to Maui. We've been planning this for months, like since June. And um, we were going to go for our anniversary in August, but I ended up getting the booking in September. So we decided to wait till September because then the whole trip becomes a write-off for me to just to do one show there. So um, <clears throat> I was supposed to be there 18th through the 23rd and then just have the one show on the 20th. And um, booked flights for me and my wife, non-refundable. Booked, um, I got a, a pretty cool villa you know, on the beach, something we've been saving up for for a while. The so, you know, have the honeymoon we never had, and uh, that was like twenty seven hundred dollars right there. I mean, not going into too much detail about price and everything, but um, I mean, yeah, I got travelers insurance, but that's more like uh, if you got COVID or something, you couldn't go. Then they'll reimburse you. But besides that, you know what I mean. Um, <clears throat> So I was at a dilemma, you know, I can't not go to one of my best friend's funerals. And uh, I didn't really get to say goodbye, which is another thing that kind of really bothered me. And I think I need this closure. You know, they say you don't go to the funeral for the person who's dead because they're dead. Apparently that's what they say. Um, you go for you or you go for like the family and friends of clo the person close to them for emotional support. Mostly you go for you, for your closure and to say goodbye. I personally never really believed in uh, funerals because, um, you know, lately I've, 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 the last couple of that I experienced have been more like memorials. Like I like that I've, I've, I've experienced some families having memorials and going, we're not going to have a funeral. Um, it's very expensive and, 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 uh, it's more like celebrating the death than the life. And I like the memorials because it's more like celebrating the life. It's everybody getting together to celebrate your life and talk about great memories that you've had. That sh you know, you can show a video, something like that. Like, that's kind of what I've been into. Uh, funerals haven't always been my, like, obviously it's not anybody's thing, but it, it's, I, I don't necessarily believe in them now. But, you know, it's for the family. They, this, you know, the family believes in it. That's what we're going to do. And it's an opportunity for everybody to come say goodbye and pay their respects. And this, we're talking about somebody who I considered a brother. And, <clears throat> I, I mean, I have no brothers. I've had, I have three sisters and, and I never had brothers. But when I became a comedian, I had, I've made all these friends who I would consider brothers. But then there's some that are considered to be like, like that's your brother that's your brother this guy was my brother like this is a person i spoke to every single day for the last 12 years at least i mean you know one of the smartest guys i've ever met i used to tell him that if i was ever on who wants to be a millionaire he'd be my lifeline because you can just call him up and ask him a question and he knew it and he would say like what do you what do you just google it i'd be like why would i google it when i could just call and ask you like one of the like very intelligent person knew a lot about everything um, I have a lot of really close friends that I talk about movies with, but he was one that I can talk about a certain genre of movies. Like, you know, he really liked the, like each year him and I would make a list of the stuff that was nominated and go watch them all and get and share our opinions on it with each other and stuff like that. So, um, I mean, you get the point. I'm, I'm, I miss him a lot, you know, I'm going to miss him. And, uh, I didn't get to say goodbye. I don't think I ever really have to, because I think the kid was a legend. He's an extremely talented person. He, uh, very gifted guitar player. I mean, I remember. I know he had a rap band at one point. I even have some songs he recorded that were well-written songs. And and uh, 
you know, some that I even played in the car and stuff. I mean, the guy tried stand up. I he did a demolition derby. He, he, I mean, just everything. He just wanted to try at least once. And he was good at all of it. It was just an extremely talented person that the world lost, and it has clearly taken effect on the universe. Um, you know, I don't want this podcast to be a very long one, but you know, I do feel that there's certain energy. Whatever you want to believe in, I think that spirits are out there. Yes, I think the energy exists, ghosts, whatever you want to call it. I, but I, I think that there's certain people that energy is so strong and and powerful. There's so much life in people that even when they're gone, it actually has an alt on the universe. Like I've actually been having a lot of bizarre things happen to me ever since. Um, I've told the story before on how every time I have a relative that passes away, someone close to me passes away, everyone in my family always gets a butterfly. It, it consistently happens to me. Um, it's almost, not that we believe in reincarnation, but it's almost a sign that our person made it on the other side. So uh, I got the butterfly on my doorstep. On my doorstep, guys. I mean, that's how that's how every single time. Like the day after I found out that my friend passed, butterfly on the doorstep without fail and it didn't fail this time um then i I have this fish i've had this fish for over a year not that i'm comparing a life to a a fish's life but i'm just saying the bizarre things around me that have been happening i had this fish for well over a year uh it was dustin ibarra's uh, fish when he moved he asked if i would take care of it so i've been taking care of it for over a year things maybe almost two years old all of a sudden i woke up he was dead um, I, I went to work. I saw a pigeon fell from the sky dead. Boom. Right in the middle of the courtyard. Uh, you know, our other friend's cat got ran over. My other friend had to put his dog down because it got cancer in the eye. Um, we've had two earthquakes here in, in, in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, just bizarre things happening that I just feel like there's a shift in the universe. Every, things just feel not the same and I what I believe that this person's energy was just so powerful either in my life or just the world in general that I really feel a shift in in the, in the universe so there are and Joey told me this a long time ago I was I was taught this by Joey and he was right I've even learned it the hard way is that in this business there's family and there's acquaintances there's no in between. There's your real family and there's acquaintances. There's a lot of people you may think that you're that are your friends. There's a lot of people you may think are your friends, but at the end of the day, they're just acquaintances. There's no in between. Family or they're an acquaintance. It's people that you have nice casualties with and you go, "Oh, that's my friend." There's nothing in between. Family or an acquaintance. Don't trust all these people, all right? I don't trust anybody. There's people that show their true hand when things goes goes down. I'm telling you that Rico was family to me. He is. He still is. He always will be my brother. And um, it's just it's it's been a it's been a rough time for the comedy community and for the universe for this uh, this big sad loss. And then. Um, you know, I, I have to go. I have to go to the funeral. So I, I, I call, you know, uh, my arrangements in Hawaii. I go, well, I don't have to be there on the 18th because my show is not till the 20th. Can I push things back a little bit? And then Hawaii is like, dude, everything's non-refundable. Tickets, the house you booked, we can't even move the date back by one day. So if I don't go, I lose the whole thing, all the money, all the planning for months. And uh, so it was, a, it was a huge dilemma. And uh, we ended up, You know, so what I had to do is just tell my wife to still go to Hawaii. And uh, so I don't lose that ticket and she could still use the house that we paid for, for that one night. Then I had to rebook myself a new ticket to go to Hawaii on the 19th instead. Just so I could make sure to get there before my show. Then I booked myself a flight to Boston Friday night. I take in the red eye. I get there Saturday morning at 6 o'clock in the morning. I got enough time to... shower like shower change go to the funeral and then i gotta get back on a plane at like five o'clock at night on uh the night of the funeral so i'm not even in boston for 24 hours i'm just going to say goodbye to my friend i want my closure i want to pay my respects and um 
I told my wife if I didn't go to the funeral I went to, with you to Hawaii, I would be like constantly distracted or feeling bad that I didn't go. I didn't get my closure. And uh, so I get to go to the funeral. I say bye to my friend. I get right back on the plane, come back to L.A. And the reason I got to come back to L.A. and not go right to Hawaii is because of these stupid COVID tests. I got to have my COVID test from L.A. Uh, so I've taken a COVID test on the 16th. And I got to come back here, get my COVID test, and then go, I can go to Hawaii. So I'll be there Sunday the 19th to meet up with my wife and we'll have you know the rest of the trip together so uh i had a panic attack i've never had one before especially about flying i never get panic attacks about stuff like that you know i maybe get a little nervous when it comes up because i think i forgot to do something but i never get panic attacks i got panic attacks like what if you know she passes her covid test she goes there a day ahead of me and then all of a sudden i get my results back i didn't pass it you know you cannot have symptoms and fucking have a stupid test fuck up and then i can't meet up with her or if i miss a flight because everything's so tight you know i gotta worry about who's gonna take care of our dog while we're gone it's just been i had a panic attack guys it's, it's just been a lot it's been a crazy week but um you know all these things in life and you know whether it's somebody dying or it's just a lot of bills piling up or you know bad credit or you know somebody comes after you for child support or I, I whatever it is all the things in life that are soul sucking that come after you they when they come at you all at once they seem to stack up and build this wall that seems like impossible that you're going to get through it seems like well, this is so much, you just don't, you don't even want to try because you just feel defeated. But I promise you all that if you take things one brick at a time, you can break down that wall brick by brick. You break through that wall and you can do it. You don't have to tackle it all at once. You just look and see all the things that need to happen for you to make it through this. And then you just start crossing them off the list. You write them down one by one brick by brick and you can break through it. And that's what I did. We keep our cool. You know, I get on the phone with Expedia good you know thank god i'm not entirely broke i mean i had the money to put up i have friends that help me you know that that work in an airline that got me on one flight so i can go say goodbye to my friend and pay my respects and uh you know then it's call the next airline call the next airline call the travel insurance company uh you know what i mean and you know just make those lists make those lists guys lists fucking help it makes that giant wall seem like a little pieces of bricks and you just cross them off as you do it. It really, really does help and it helps you stay organized and it makes you feel in control. I've lost sleep the last couple of nights and, you know, by making these lists and writing down the things that I have to do and getting them done, I've been able to sort of like sleep better and at least feel I'm in control of the things that are happening and, uh, you know, keeping my chin up. With that being said, to go back to acquaintances and family and nothing in between. You see who your real friends are and those are the people that are considered your family. You know, Another thing I would like to point out well, with that being said is that um, thank you to everybody who reached out to me. They knew how close and I, uh, him and I were. Um, I mean close guys. I mean from like the time I started stand up we were like inseparable like you know, open mics together, lost people together, you know, sharing family dinners together. He was the best man at my first wedding. Um, gave one of the worst best man speeches in the entire time that he wasn't my best man at the second wedding. <laughs> but we always just joked about that. Um, you know, just uh, a hell of a human being who's completely uh my brother you know and uh, i feel like a piece of me is dead but i'm not gonna let that happen because like i said the kid was a legend and legends never die and that's why i ain't gotta really say goodbye and that's why a piece of me isn't really dead i'm just dealing with it and like an adult i'm dealing with it brick by brick and and, and you can you can conquer anything if you stand up strong like a man or the woman that you are you can conquer anything it's tough no one said it's easy but you can do it and you'll get through it. And um, I just pray that uh, he's at peace. His soul's at peace. All of them. Fu Quan. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say was uh, what I was getting at is thanking everybody who reached out to me and, and you know, offered support. I, I noticed a lot of people, you know, the first things that people would text me without even saying, hey, I heard or hey, I'm sorry. The first things people were texting me were like, hey, I love you. 
you know, because obviously they heard I heard, and I got an overwhelming amount of text messages from people that I don't even talk to that often. They're just like, hey, you know what, I love you. And uh, that's why I say there's a difference between acquaintances and family. And and I really appreciate it. And uh, even the people on social media, you know, I've, I've made a lot of um, really close friends and I've met a lot of really good people along the way of doing almost 13 years of being a stand-up comic. And, uh, you know, not to mention my own family that has been there supportive, especially my wife, who's, I don't know what I would do if I had to come home to an empty house and she wasn't there being as supportive as a person as she is um but i want to you know just point out to everybody uh first of all say thank you for that and reaching out and people seeing if i needed anything and uh people offering you know if i needed to talk you know joey diaz call, has called me like every day since and and checked on me and uh i i got a uh I'm, I'm a blessed person to have um more family than acquaintances and, but I want to point out that um, we should do this more often. And I know we say it all the time, but you really have to do it. You should always reach out to people and check on them and make sure that they're doing okay. And you should always text people and let them know you love them. Set yourself aside from the acquaintance and who's the family. Don't wait, number one, don't wait for people to be gone to remind you that you should check in on people and let them know you love them and that you're thinking about them. And number two, don't wait for people to be gone to let them know what they mean to you, to share pictures and videos of great things they did and the things you did together and the great memories you had. Let them see it while they're still alive. Death is a constant reminder that we need to do this while people are still alive. And we shouldn't wait for a death to remind us that we should text someone and tell them that we love them. Or that we should post something on social media that remember this picture, you and I had such a great memory. Or call them up and let them know how intelligent you think they are. How you really appreciate and value the times you've had together and their opinions on things and the chats that you have. And that if there, if you have somebody who is out there who is the one person you can talk to about this particular subject, not that you can't talk to other people, but it's just like that's your guys' connection and you really appreciate it, call them and let them know you really appreciate it. Don't wait before it's too late. And I'm not saying that because I waited before it was too late. I'm saying that because I did that with Rico all the time. You know, This was my brother. This was a, a, a man, two straight hetero men that would hug each other when we saw each other, kiss each other on the cheek. Uh, we absolutely loved each other. We all do. All of us brothers. All of us brothers and sisters who are really tight. But, uh, you know, him and I, like, you know, I can remember him kissing me on the cheek. I remember him hugging me. I remember him, you know, calling me uh, the young buck whenever he was trying to teach me a lesson. Well, let me tell you, young buck. Or he'd say, uh, hey, listen here, Gussie. You know, and, uh, you know, or he'd call me and go, hey, go. And I can hear his voice. Hey, go. And I can hear, you know, I would go, Ricky, you know, and, and, and. You know, it's just great, great things. I'm telling you guys that a lot of people make those mistakes. I've made those mistakes before. I know, you know, there's so many people I should, I should constantly be checking in on or telling them how much I appreciate the relationship that we have. But I'm telling you that uh, I'm not saying this because I didn't do it with Rico and I wish I had. I really did. I really did. I let him know I appreciated it. We really knew how much we loved each other. We really knew and felt the bond that we had and the things that we enjoyed doing together and the times that we've had. And um, our talks, you know, I'll, you know, I'm constantly was driving and would always talk to him while I was driving, have great conversations. And uh, I just want you guys to use this opportunity to realize that you never know when you're going to get that call because, guys, this was unexpected. This was... You know, you, whatever you want to call it, an accident. Accidental overdose, I feel like, is when somebody knows what they're taking and they take too much of it and then they overdosed. Whether it be suicidal overdose or an accidental overdose. You can call it an accidental overdose, but I feel like when somebody's taking something and they're actually taking something else that they didn't know because it was contaminated, that's poison. So, um, it's just really difficult and... 
I know that you know the last couple of years Rico is going through a lot medically. Uh, you know, he lost his parents over in one year pretty recently. They both died of cancer, the same exact type of cancer. He was not doing well with that, which is why he came back to L.A. to be around us friends and stuff. And uh, um, life's too short. Go out there and tell people that you love them because you never know when it's going to be too late. Let people know that you appreciate the relationship you have with them those little things that only you guys have let them know how much you value it and if you got great pictures and great videos and want to tell people how talented they were or smart or whatever post it up now don't wait for them to be gone you don't need an excuse or like a memorial to honor someone's life honor life while they're living thank you guys for listening and uh in conclusion, after all that, after all the work that I uh, put into making all those arrangements, my um, show in Hawaii got canceled, <laughs> which I found out after I changed all the flights. So I didn't even have to be there on the 20th. But same, I would have gone anyway because I already invested a lot on the uh, honeymoon for my wife and I, which I would have lost. So um, it sucks, but I guess the, the show got canceled because uh, they're starting to get COVID restrictions out there again, and little by little the indoor theaters are getting shut down and and some and and some even restaurants for indoor dining so they're starting to get some restrictions again um which kind of sucks for a place to vacation too but hey it's a great it's a gorgeous place and the absolute i was saying that the absolute worst that could happen is if i get stuck here and i can't go meet my wife it would suck and she wouldn't be able to fully enjoy herself but hey she can enjoy the week in maui and at least someone got to enjoy it. But that's not even the worst that could happen. The worst that can happen is that there's like an accident on the way. You know, we don't have safe flights, natural disasters, things like that. Um, I ain't in the box. And so as long as we're safe and we're each happy and my family is safe at home and uh, I, I can't complain too much. I'm not the one in the box. So... That's what's going on, guys. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me. Um, I'm sorry about the Maui show that had to get canceled for that reason, but I'm still going to go. I'm, I'm going to take the time to rest and relax and regroup and come back to L.A. ready to continue the rest of this 2021 tour, continue working, continue working on my documentary, and um, hit things even harder. I'm going to make our brothers proud of us. And I know you guys out there, a lot of up-and-coming artists and aspiring artists whether it be stand-up music whatever which uh, rico did all of it i know a lot of i know a lot of you guys listen to this show and i want to let you know that you can and will make the your loved ones proud of you even the ones that are already gone they're proud of you okay do me a favor and remember that only love can save the world I'm Augustino Zoida. This is Homeschool Podcast. I'll talk to you guys next week. Go out there and spread that love. I'll see you next time. Let those people know. Peace.